start with uh, painting and I'll do uh, all the assembly and so, so on. Um, it's totally finished. I am only waiting for uh, the light in front. It's a LED ramp. I ordered it uh, yesterday. Hopefully coming soon. And now I'm just uh, waiting for the snow. So stay safe and enjoy the video. done some grinding to get it the welding's a bit smoother I painted the frame in uh, black and I uh, also have some primer underneath this black paint and here you can see how it looks it's not that perfect finished on everything but here is the support for the coil over in the rear and also for the support wheels for the track band. I painted that one silver, as you can see. Here we have the complete skid with this support for the track band on the top and uh, <coughs> also the fixing point for the coil over in rear. As you can see here, I also drilled some holes in this one, in these wheels, to make it lighter. Here I am fitting the bottom plate and I use this uh, rubber sealing, self-sticky, uh, to make this uh, watertight. Now the front end is in position, I also fitted the, the skid and the top plate. Uh, I will... Uh, move the skis. You can see here I have some bushings on the outside. I'm gonna move it uh, to the inside and then I will have a more narrow <coughs> narrow front and even make it more maneuverable. I'm trying to design the front of the snowmobile and I will put the auxiliary battery here. I would yes uh, make some rivets and then I have a just a kind of band to put that in place. I cut some parts away here, it was unnecessary and now I'll make a paper template to make this design here. So uh, I will make some measurements and then I will try to make a template and uh, make the actual plate. Here you can see the paper template. I managed to use the scissor and some pencil and some measurements to make. And here you can see the finished result. I pressed it in aluminum and also used the grinder to cut it. And uh, well, quite good. Now I must put some uh, lead ramp here so it looks a bit more. Really, I think otherwise it's quite boring front. Yes, now I'm trying to build this box around the batteries and motor. It's gonna be uh, something like that, but I don't know how to measure this one. It's uh, it does not fit. I must have uh, some wrong with my measure stick or something. I will try to do this one again. But uh, the idea, anyway, is to make this one fit and I have a, a, a flange here so I will rivet an aluminium sheet on the bottom so it fits here in this flange and then I will uh, put some rubber so it's, it's got like that and have this flipper uh, flapper shaft I've got the uh, sprockets for the transmission, both on the motor, this is size 14, and this is for the drive shaft, and it's 37. 
so it's a bit lower geared than the electric snow bike and uh, I machined this one a bit I decreased the dimension and also there were some splines on the inside so I machined that on my latte and now I'm just gonna tack this sprocket to the to this flange so I can fit it on the drive shaft out to be somewhat more than just tacking but <clears throat> I think this will be sufficient and uh, it's easy for me to if I want to change rocket just a grinder to remove these weldings so it's not that hard now it's time to prepare the battery and I will exchange this uh, charge power BMS because I need this in another application and I'm going to exchange it to this uh, Delegreen BMS 24S 250 amps. And this is the new version. I had another 200 amp version before and it was almost half the size. So I think this is an improved one. Uh, and uh, when I, because I, it changes, I need the other one to another application. And in built in this, I have. Uh, control of discharge and charge so I don't have to build any connection to an external relay to control the discharge and charging so that's why I'm changing it and it's uh, easier for me to get everything into the space in the engine bay so that's why I'm changing it so now I'm going to tear this apart and uh, exchange these BMS wires so it fits to the new BMS. I'm uh, <clears throat> just connecting my new BMS wires to the old ones. I just uh, solder them and uh, I don't take this apart and, and uh, put new connectors on. I just cut it and, and, and solder it. Now I have to figure out uh, where to put the BMS. Uh, we were sitting like this in the, to the side of the compartment and the motor will be here and the controller will be sitting on top here and I think I have space so I can attach it like that then I have the B minus and hopefully this will be long enough to to the minus side on the controller I think I have to put it in place so I can see because I also have the main contactor around here well I have to check that <coughs> as you can see here I put the battery in and I wrapped it in uh, gaffer tape and I will use these uh, bands here to get it in place and I think it's, uh, it's working quite well I also put in the main relay here because I want to see how much space I got. I'm going to sit like that. I have the positive side of the battery below here. I have to make some extension so I can get it to the main relay. I have the minus side here and also the, the BMS. And uh, I will put it behind these, this one because it gets so crowded and uh, if I put it there I can also this uh, from the side of the control of the BMS is gonna this wire gonna be long enough to fit it and also this one I will be able to connect to the minus side on the battery I will also put this colometer on this is too small but I will only use the, so I can see uh, the voltage. So I will just uh, use this as a 
a bolt to connect the, the wire from the battery and to the BMS on the B minus side. And then I can uh, see what kind of status the battery is in according to voltage because that's the most useful thing I think so I can see how long I can drive. I'm not that interested in how much amperage it flows because uh, the controller shuts down if it's too much so I don't care about that. Well, I made a little dashboard for the kilometer and lights, ignition and rear and forward. And uh, I could get the cover for the box in place also. It was not too tight. I thought that first, but it's okay. Now I think I have made all the wires for the function I want. And also connected it to the switches here. I put the auxiliary battery and the strap in front. And now it's time to get the BMS in position. I isolated this with uh, some tape and I will try to get it in there connected through this uh, part for the kilometer. Well, if you read the instructions from the BMS, you should connect the B minus first, and then you connect the, the wires to the, each cell. Probably it will be some sh shortcut otherwise. But this is not easy. Well, there's a lot of wires. I think this is gonna work anyway. I will connect the kilometer and see if I have any. Well, I have 93 volts, seems to be working. Well, now everything is connected and uh, it's time to uh, connect the last main cable from the battery pack. This is the most thrilling part because you never know what's happening. And I got the motor in place and the controller and as usual it gets so crowded. It was by millimeters I can fit the motor so I was a bit lucky but uh, the sprocket got stuck I don't know why I have to remove it again but uh, I can uh, program the motor and see if I can get everything to spin that's my goal now but now I'm gonna see if I can get this one I'm a bit nervous I must admit Should be a, a little spark from the when I connect it because uh, we're gonna charge up the EGBTs or whatever it's called from the it's a pre charged relay so we need that much of it. Nope, nothing. Now let's 
something there, I felt it. <laughs> mm. Well, now it should be 96, 94 volts. Between here, if it's correct. Ninety three point one. That's maybe okay. Yeah. Not a cast not a catastrophe. That's great. Well now I connected the auxiliary battery and now we're gonna see if it's alive. This is the Bluetooth dongle. So I can program. It's gonna start this one. Yeah. This is also a bit. Oh, it's alive! Ha <laughs> ha! Now I've started my tablet, and I will see if I can get connected to the. This is a warning. Do not start motor. No, I will not. Yes. Bluetooth. Yes. Connect. Yes. Now I'm connected. Read. Yes, I'm connected. So far, so good. See if the switches forward. Yes. Reverse, yes. TPS. Oops. The motors was running. Strange. <laughs> well, now I must make the motor identify angle. And I think I will go and get my instruction manual. Let's see it. Okay, now I must make the motor angle identification and when you do that you put 170 here one seven six right dot I've read completely okay read Yes. Uh, please quit from the user program. Disconnect. Yes. Please turn off the power supply. Yes. Please turn the power. So turn on the supply, and a few seconds the people will send a constant. So try to run. Yes. Turn it on. Now oh, this one will try to run. Yes, it does. Yeah, now it seems to be finished with that identification. And now I will turn off the power again. Like that. Please wait a few seconds until you turn on the power again. That was a few seconds. Now turn on again. And now we'll try to connect here again. Yes. Connected. And now we're gonna read this again. Now it's gonna say 85 here. It says 85. Now everything should be okay. Okay, forward. It works. Max speed 4000. That's a bit too slow, I think. 
I will check the engine parameters and I think it's more. Now I fitted the transmission <coughs> and I used the original uh, tensioner for the chain and it seems to be working both uh, forward and rear. I hope the gearing is, uh, is good. It's a bit lower than on the electric snow bike, so I think it will be working quite good with this uh, height of the track band. Okay, short summary. Here you can see the front end and its trailing arms from uh, Skido Summit, so it uh, gets as narrow as possible to get it e easy to maneuverable. maneuver. Here we have the auxiliary battery. Here you can see the transmission, it's rebuilt and I put in a chain transmission here and I'm using the original tensioner from the Skido. Underneath there you have the motor, the controller, the BMS and the battery. The battery I estimate it would last about 30 minutes. Small display where you can see the status of the battery. Here we have a thumb gas. It's all flat because I want to have a, some kind of special design. So you can see it's not an ordinary snowmobile. Footsteps. Some protection from snow. Here you can see the braking system. It's also from a snowmobile. Here we have the wires and where I charge the main battery and auxiliary battery. So the I can just remove the, the hood here, protecting this, and then I can charge it and even I plan to put in some heating here if I want to drive and, and charge it outside. The skid is uh, rebuilt also, it's as light as possible and uh, it's 44 millimeter height. And the frame is tubular, and uh, the, the front end, as I said, is from a summit. And then this is Rex Rex system. Here is the chain case in position, and the hood is isolated also. And here is how it looks uh, with, the, with the front plate, aluminum in position. And uh, it's only missing a lead ramp here for lights. Now we're gonna weigh it and see how much uh, weight it is. That's gonna be quite in interesting. This was quite fun. It's just one uh, one belt, and it was in the middle. <laughs> so it's uh, one hundred forty-seven kilos. It is about. Uh, well, 50 or 60 or 70 kilos lighter than an ordinary snowmobile. Yes, in the next video you will see me uh, putting this stuff into my Land Rover project. It's the leftover parts from the electric rock roller and I think uh, it worked quite well. So I have to put it into my standing project. It's been standing for I think 10 years. Now it's a good time to make it finished. So I hope you see you in the next video. Stay safe and bye bye.